lovely kitty cats. How is everybody doing tonight? I hope very well. It is a story time. And as I promised at our last haul, we are going to actually talk about what to look for when you actually go into a jewelry store to purchase wedding bands, engagement rings, and just jewelry in general. Um, you know I've said a hundred bazillion times, so I'm not going to say it again. Um, okay, well, maybe one more time. I worked for years and years and years in a fine jewelry store. And I am a Diamond Council of America certified diamondologist and gemologist. Um, and so I just feel like people go into jewelry stores all the time and don't really know what they're looking for. Now, most jewelry stores are going to be quite honest with you. But it also depends on your sales person. Um, there's a couple, there's a couple sharks in every store. And we used to call them sharks um, because they would, um, as soon as a customer would walk in the store, they would pounce on them so that they could get the sale. And they would pretty much tell them anything they could to make make the sale. And they would get very upset or jealous if you had a better day than they did, if you made better sales than they did. Um, and so they were uncomfortable people to work with. Um, and excuse me, guys, I still have a cold. And um, I'm a little better today, but... Um, I'm still sniffling and coughing and, and such. Um, not to get off topic, but you know I do all the time. Um, but I had a doctor's appointment yesterday, and um, the, uh, the ambulance transport came to pick me up, to take me to my doctor's appointment. And guys, I was so sick yesterday that... I threw up from the time the ambulance pulled out from in front of my house till I got to the doctor's office. Um, they wheeled me in, wheeled me onto the elevator um, and into the doctor's office and I'm waiting in line to check in. And just the motion of the elevator and then whipping me around in the chair Luckily, they had a bag to give me, um, threw up in the waiting room, threw up in the examination room, threw up all the way home on, in the ambulance, threw up after I got home. Um, later in the day, when Tony came home from work, he brought home some food for dinner, ate the food for dinner, threw up the dinner, um... And needless to say, I, I I didn't actually go to bed till about three o'clock in the morning. I laid there till about four o'clock, um, with a barf bag next to me in bed because you know I can't just jump up and run to the bathroom. You know I have to get up, slide into the wheelchair, wheel myself out. But even when I do that, I can't get into the bathroom. I haven't been in my bathroom in months because it's too sharp of a turn in my hallway. And even with the leg uh, lifts off of my chair, I still can't, I still can't get the right angle to get in there. Um, so I, I have to have something in bed or close to the bed um, in case I need it. Um, 
So I finally fell asleep about four o'clock. I had to, I couldn't lay down. Every time I laid flat, I couldn't breathe. I was gasping for air. I was coughing. So I had to prop my pillows up against the wall, prop myself up against the wall, um, and just kind of lay there like that. And I was still... <sighs> and coughing every two seconds and feeling nauseated. And Oh, guys, I hope I can sleep better tonight because... Uh, I, it's been days since I've had a really restful night's sleep um, where I've gone to bed at a realistic time and slept through the night and got up early enough to handle my business. I've not done anything. Like I went to the doctors yesterday, but I had phone calls I needed to make. I had appointments, um, other appointments I need to reschedule and phone calls I needed to make for, for T-Dog. Um, and I just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't even handle my business yesterday. So, um, hopefully tonight's night. <clears throat> At any rate, guys. So, there are a few things that you need to know when you go shopping for a diamond. Basically, you need to know what shape you're looking for. You need to know um, what size you're looking for, carrot-wise. And you need to know a little bit, have some knowledge of, of color and clarity. Um, and what color metal you want it in. Do you want it in white gold? Do you want it in yellow gold? Do you want it in platinum? Um, most fine jewelry stores don't sell the sterling silver engagement rings. Um, they will carry a line of men's wedding bands in tungsten and titanium and stainless steel. Um, and some sterling silver, but for the most part, you won't find diamond engagement rings in a fine jewelry store in sterling silver. Um, at any rate, guys, so um, there's a lot of different cuts of stones that you can choose from. There's the traditional round cut. There's the more popular princess cut, which is square. There is a very traditional marquee, um, also a pear shape. You can find heart shapes and trillion cuts. Um, so there's a lot of those to choose from. My advice is to either go on the internet and look at the different shapes or physically just take a trip to a jewelry store on a fact-finding mission and just look in person at the different cuts try them on see which one you like the best on that fact-finding mission you can also figure out whether you like yellow gold white gold most people already know that they which which color gold they like white gold of course is the most popular um a lot of young kids think yellow gold uh, is old-fashioned. They think um, a solitaire ring is a little old-fashioned. Uh, but yellow gold and solitaires will always be, always be popular. So it's really up to you. It's really your choice. Um, do you want matching wedding bands? Do you want different wedding bands? Does your husband want... Wedding bands with stones in. Does he not want stones? Um, are you going to buy wedding set so that your uh, your wedding ring matches your engagement ring, or do you want to buy them separately and do kind of an a la carte thing? Um, so really, there's a lot of choices, and it can be really confusing. 
Um, so of course, my, my first bit of advice is to do your homework and look on the internet, go on, go on little fact finding missions. Um, you know, if you're out at the mall anyway, and you pass one of the jewelry stores, just, just pop in and, you know, as per, uh, jewelry store policy, they're going to pounce on you. Okay. But don't be afraid to say, okay, look guys, I'm not, I'm not buying anything today. I'm not buying. I'm just here to look and see what is available, what you have, what is out there. Something to see if there's something I like that I can relate that to my fiance or, you know, here is my fiance and I just want to show him what I like, but we are not buying anything today. Don't be afraid to tell them that. Okay. I, as a salesperson, always appreciated when my customer would say to me, I am just looking to see what I like and see what you have. Not buying anything today. I have no money today, okay? I don't want your credit card because I'm not buying anything today. So don't offer me your credit card because I'm not buying. And I appreciated that. I still certainly gave them my full attention. Um, and they always left with my business card because they will remember the good service I gave them, whether they were buying or not. The information that I gave them, the time I took out of my day to spend with them, and they'll remember that. And when they come back, they'll bring my card and say, I'm looking for Bob. Or Bob helped me the first time I was in. And usually then your original salesperson will get at least half of the sale. They'll at least split the sale if you buy today. And I didn't, I'm not waiting on you today. Um, so that's really important too, guys. If you have someone that wa has waited on you, that has given you um, their card, always make sure you bring that back to the store with you when you are ready to buy. Because we really, we really lived on on our commissions. Um, you, you get paid very little. Um, uh, I, I mean, you get paid a living wage, but, um, it, there's nothing extra. And so you really count on jewelry store employees really count on their commissions. Um, so, you know, be mindful of that and, and, you know, be a good person and let let them know if your if your salesperson is not there that day, the person that's waiting on you, let them know that Bob waited on you when you were in the last time and he should get the sale or at least part of the sale. Um now <coughs> color and clarity. Um, color is the amount of tint that is in the stone naturally when it was formed in the ground. You've got different variations of color. Um, so D, E, and F is going to be colorless. Um, colorless means that it is perfectly clear. It has no tint of color. GHI is going to be near colorless, which means it's going to have a tiny itty bitty little hint of usually yellow in the stone. It's not something that you can really see unless you have a GHI stone next to a DEF stone then you're going to be able to compare and see the difference. 
But usually a GHI is the quality of stones that are the most affordable and more readily available in your uh, chain, na national chain jewelry stores. Um, anything below HI is going to start to have more color in there. The color scale goes all the way to Z. Now, Z is going to be like your black diamond or a blue diamond or a green diamond or even a canary yellow diamond. Uh, pink, there's pink diamonds. You have chocolate diamonds, champagne diamonds. Diamonds come in every color imaginable. It is a natural color in the stone that comes out over millions of years of forming in the ground. Most color stones, color diamonds, I should say, in the big chain jewelry stores are going to be um, heat treated. So <clears throat> they take the diamond, again, a natural diamond, and there's a way of heat treating that diamond so that the natural color of that diamond comes forward as it would if it was formed naturally in the ground. Humans just speed it up. So it is a natural diamond. It is a natural color. They're not painted. They're not dyed. They're enhanced. <coughs> Which means they're more affordable than a natural, um, I don't want to say natural colored stone because they are all natural colored, but a stone that has naturally evolved into that color over millions of years. Um, so just be aware of that as well. Um, they're, they're, they're still a diamond and they're still beautiful and they're still valuable, but they're a little less valuable than a stone that has naturally gotten that color. Um, so definitely look for um, GHI. Um, if you can afford a DEF, good for you. Get me one too. Okay. Um, but G... Uh, GHI is going to be your basic stone that you can purchase in those stores. Um, <clears throat> then you have clarity. Now, every diamond, as it's forming in the ground, will have natural inclusions in the stone. There are natural things that happen in the stone when it is forming. One thing could be little black dots in the stone. Um, and when you look into the stone with a loop, you can see uh, maybe a little splattering of, of black dots that, again, looks like dirt. It looks like the stone needs to be clean. Most of the time, you cannot see it with the naked eye. You can only see it through a loop. There's also something that is called feathering or feathers. And what that is, it looks like a little jagged crack in the stone. If you ever um, take an ice cube and drop it in a hot beverage and you hear that pop, that crack, and you look at it and it's got little crack lines all through it, that's kind of what it looks like in a diamond. Um, it's not a crack. Your diamond is not going to break apart. It's not going to fall apart. It's not going to crumble. Um, it's just a natural occurrence as it was being formed and as it was growing. It's kind of like a stretch mark, I guess. Kind of like a growing pain. <coughs> Some of them are bigger and more visible than others. Some of them are not. 
It depends on the clarity of the stone that you get, whether they are more visible. You um, start on the clarity scale at an F. F is flawless. F means it has no inclusions in the stone whatsoever. Again, if you can afford an F in D, E, F color, go on and get you one and get me one too. Okay. Um, because I don't even have one that's that good. Um, so F is flawless. Then you have VVS 1 and 2. VVS is very, very slight inclusions, 1 and 2. 1, of course, is a little better than 2, but if you've got a VVS stone, you know, that's good, too. Um, next, you have VS 1 and 2. VS is very slight inclusions, 1 and 2. Then you go down to... Um, SI. SI is slightly included SI 1 and 2. SIs are probably the what you're going to find the most in those big chain jewelry stores. So you're going to find GHI in color and usually SI 1 or 2 in clarity. SI 1 or 2, very nice stones. You really can't see anything with the naked eye. You have to have a loop. Then you have I, one, two, and three. I is included. Of course, now we say every stone has something in it unless it's an F. I, one, two, and three. I is included, which means there is definitely feathers in the stone there's probably carbon spots the little black spots normally you cannot see it with the naked eye but in an eye one two or three you may be able to see it with the naked eye doesn't mean you can but you may <coughs> i one two one and two are also pretty readily available at the bigger chain jewelry stores. So I would say in my experience, the biggest um, amount of stones that we would receive in the jewelry store were anywhere from um, an SI1 to an I2. So anything in between there uh, would be something that you could find in our store. Um, then, of course, you have, you know, a little chip, diamond chip, all the way up to the bigger size carrots. Now, in my experience, in the years that I worked for the jewelry store, I only ever saw a, the largest stone I saw was a three carat um, in a single stone. Usually we carried quarter carats to two carats, sometimes two and a half carats. Of course, the larger the carat weight, the more expensive it's going to be as well. The larger the carat weight and the lower the, clarity the more easily you're going to see the inclusions in the stone and the color um so definitely keep that in mind as well uh anything i think above a half carat or three quarters of a carat um, a one carat, a one and a half, a two carat stone is 
you know, absolutely gorgeous. I have personally, I have a beautiful two carat ring um, that I received when I was very young um, from someone that I was dating at the time. And I, I actually was in college at the time that um, that he gave me this ring. Um, was not an engagement ring, was not any, you know, thing like that. Um, we were in New York City. We went into um, Tiffany's. I tried the ring on. I fell in love with it. Of course, I'm not buying it. I'm in college. I had no money. And I thought we were just in there to have breakfast. Get it? Um, so I, I stepped outside. While I was outside, he bought the ring. Um, then took me on a beautiful carriage ride around Central Park and gave me the ring and said, okay, this is not an engagement ring. I'm, you know, it's just because you love the ring and I wanted you to have it. I think you should have it. And don't ever pawn it to pay the con ed. Okay. So I still have the ring to this day. Um, have pawned through my life most of my good jewelry um, at times when I was down and needed to pay the rent or the con ed. So, um, but that ring I, I never pawned and I never would. And, um, you know, I've told uh, my family that's, you know, that's your inheritance. So when I go, make sure you snatch it. Uh, it's in the jewelry box. Don't just get rid of the jewelry. Because my family knows better than to just get rid of my jewelry box without looking to see what's in there. <coughs> so, um, size of, of carrot weight. Um, is again really up to you. If you are a young couple and you cannot afford a big stone or a big ring right away, don't buy it. Don't buy it. Don't let them talk you into a store credit card because they're really good at that. They have quotas they have to make. They Their number one goal is to talk you into spending as much money as as possible, as they can get out of you. And if they can get the, the store credit card with the outrageous interest rates, you know, that's part of their job. So, guys, don't do it. Just, just get yourself a, a, a little quarter carat or a half carat whatever you can afford right now. And then years down the line when you're established and, you know, maybe your five-year anniversary, you go out and treat her to the one carat or two carat that she deserves. But now we can afford it. Um, please do not go into your marriage um, jewelry poor. Because there's no there's no reason for that. Again, our last wish haul, you can get lovely, lovely, beautiful, beautiful rings in precious metal and semi-precious stones that will last you for years. And nobody's going to know the difference. Nobody's going to know. And you don't have to tell them it's sterling silver or stainless steel. And you don't have to tell them that it is a white topaz or a white sapphire. You keep that information to yourself, auntie. And let them think whatever they're going to think. If I mean, obviously you don't want to lie. But if you don't say anything... They're not going to assume anything, and they're not going to know the difference. Believe me, they're not going to know the difference. Because I wear... <coughs> I wear wish, wish jewelry now 
every single day, every day. And people just assume, hey, number one, because they know me, you know, and who's going to be walking around with, you know, I don't know, Calvin Klein jeans and a polo shirt or Tommy Hilfiger or, you know, whatever designer that you like. I happen to love designer clothes and I'm a label whore. I love labels. I'm sorry. I grew up that way. Um, and I love fine jewelry. And when I had fine jewelry, I wore the hell out of it. But I can't afford it right now. Um, and so I wear Wish jewelry every single day. Or I, you know, I, I take the Wish jewelry and then I mix it with my good jewelry. My, my the jewelry that I do still have that's 14 karat gold and real diamonds. Okay, you mix it up. And nobody knows the difference. I have people that I see every day, like at Wawa, who wait for me to come in to see what ring I have on that day. And they grab my hand, and they look at it, and they ooh and ah. And under the fluorescent lights of Wawa, the, the, the stones are so sparkly. And... They never question whether it's real or whether it's not. Okay? I don't know. Maybe she was born with it. Maybe it's implants. Who knows? Um, so, guys, don't be afraid if you are... If you're a young couple and you can't afford it right now, go to Wish. Get the alternative. Okay? Get get the alternative. The less expensive, more affordable alternative. Then when you can't afford it, you go to the jewelry store and you get yourself the good stuff. Okay? But please don't, do not ever make yourself jewelry poor. It's not worth it. Because the resale value, although is okay, most people will only give you the, the metal weight. Okay? They'll only give you the weight for the gold or the silver. And they don't give a crap about the stones that are in there. They're not necessarily buying those rings for resale. They're, they're buying them to melt it down for the metal, to, to sell it for scrap metal, to get the metal weight, to make more jewelry. So unless you've got the Hope Diamond, you know, I mean, my two carat is beautiful and it's a very good color and clarity stone. Um, and I took it one time just to get it sort of appraised for resale. And the person I took it to, I had sold a lot of, of jewelry to in the in the past. And um, he offered me $250 for the gold. Uh, no. I know how much this ring cost originally. And that was, crap, what, 40 years ago? Um, well, 35 years ago, maybe, 30. Making myself older than I really am. At any rate, don't count on resale. Okay, guys. Um, so... You know, if you go into it thinking, you know, well, it's an investment, which it is, but I can make money off of this ring eventually. No, you can't. Okay. So get what you like, get what you can afford, and pass it down. That's what jewelry's meant to do. Okay. It's meant to be enjoyed at the moment, and then 
passed down through the family. And I personally am always thrilled to get jewelry from family members that has been passed down, that's got some history, that's old, um, that's worn, that's used. Um, I have some rings from my father and grandfathers um, that you can't even really see the setting anymore. You can't read the writing on the ring, like a class ring. You can't read the writing on it because it's been so worn, it's worn down. It's kind of, they're smooth. And I just think that those are the best, the best, because they show the love that your family member had for that piece of jewelry because they wore it all the time. And they they wore the setting down. Um, anyway, guys, that is pretty much it. Pretty much all you need to know. Um, I mean, there's tons of, of other different settings. There's, you know, a solitaire. There's more fancy settings. We had a bridge setting during our hall. We had a solitaire during our hall. Um, there's things that they call a frame ring, which is a solid ring in the center, and then it's got stones, little stones set around it, either round, oval, square, in like a frame. They frame the center stone. Um, there's cluster rings where there's uh, other diamonds, little diamonds set together to look like one big center stone <clears throat> most of those are are tension set and uh they're very they can be very delicate you can loosen up those stones just from daily wear and you can um lose a stone out of that setting very easily um so keep that in mind as well when you're looking if you like the cluster um rings so there's a lot of different settings and styles and cuts and types of rings. So do your homework online, do your fact-finding mission in the, in the store, not buying anything today, and do your homework and you'll be fine. In the meantime, if you have any questions for me on shopping for diamonds or ring rings in general, wedding sets, bridal rings, engagement rings, wedding bands, if you have any questions on gemstones, which we really didn't get into on this video, but we're getting a little long. Um, in the video, so I don't want to go on forever, which I could. Um, I could go on for another hour about diamonds. But that is the basic information that I've given you tonight. And you take this basic information that I've given you, and you do your homework, you do your fact-finding reconnaissance mission, and... Go in when you are ready to buy. Go in with some knowledge of what you're looking for and what you want. Don't let the salesperson push you around. Don't let the salesperson talk you into anything because they will play on your emotion. And I'm giving away little secrets that they tell you on their training videos when you're hired um how to sell um don't let them play with your emotions because they will they understand that this is probably one of the most emotional purchases that you'll ever make and they will they will play on that um they definitely will exploit that to their to their benefit 
So don't let them talk you into anything. Don't let them put you around. Don't let them talk you into um, the credit card. Don't let them talk you into 90 days, same as cash. Because what they don't tell you, or what they do tell you, but they don't stress sometimes, sometimes they don't explain it fully to you. You do 90 days, same as cash, that's great. You have 90 days interest free. But if you don't have that total paid off by the end of the 90 days, then all of that interest reverts back to the first day that you purchased the ring and you pay all that interest anyway. So unless you can pay it off, in 90 days, don't do it. Um, always get the warranty, though. That is one thing that you do want, and it's a small fee. Usually um, goes by the purchase price of, of the ring. <clears throat> so maybe it's $100, maybe it's $120, $140. My advice is always get the warranty because what the warranty usually covers, at least it did in my store, it covered sizing for life. So as many times as you need that ring size, you could have that, that ring size two or three times a month if you wanted to, and it would be free. I don't know who'd want to, but... You know, if you gain and lose a lot of weight monthly. Um, but it's it's free sizing for life. They cover um, the stone itself. So, and that's for diamonds, not for gemstones, but for diamonds. If anything happens to the diamond, even if you lose the diamond, they will re replace it with another stone of the same quality. Now, if you actually lose the whole ring, oops, the ring slipped off in the ocean. So it's somewhere at the bottom of the Pacific. Um, or, or somewhere at the bottom of the, the Atlantic. You know, it's, it's laying on the floor of the ocean with the Titanic. I don't know. But then, of course they're not going to replace your ring for free, but they will replace the stone. It includes cleanings. It includes inspections. And you want to get your rings inspected at least once a month because you want to head off any problem that will cause a bigger problem down the road. If your stone is loose, if prong is bent, they can catch that with the inspection and they can get it fixed before you lose your stone. Um, and all of that is included. It's usually a lifetime warranty. So I always got the lifetime warranties on any of the jewelry that I purchased from the jewelry store. It's, it's very, very worth it. So always get your warranty. And other than that, guys, any other questions that creep up that you have, drop them in the comments below or drop me an email and I will answer them as quickly and as best I can. Of course, any questions about gemstones, like I said, we didn't get into gemstones this week, but um, gemstones can be tricky as well, so if you have any questions about gemstones, let me know. And until next time, guys, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So, be happy, be healthy, be safe. Do not get fleas. And I will see you next time. Okay, guys? So take care, and...